Dominican delegation forms part of the first OECS Authority meeting, Caribbean poetry workshop staged in Dominica, and the Fisheries Division discusses the invasion of a species from the Mediterranean Sea. Hello and welcome to another edition of National Focus. I'm Pearl Fontaine. And I'm Mervyn Matthews. Stay with us for the details of the headline stories and others after the break. Welcome back. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt is heading a Dominican delegation to the first sitting of the OECS Assembly scheduled to begin in Antigua on Tuesday, March 26. Other members of the Assembly from Dominica's Parliament include Honorable Rayburn Blackmore, Honorable Ambrose George, Honorable Dr. Colin McIntyre and Opposition Leader Honorable Hector John. Dominica's Commissioner and Ambassador to the OECS, His Excellency Felix Gregoire, is also attending the sitting. At the sitting, the Assembly will adopt rules of procedure and debate a motion on the challenges to free movement of persons within the OECS Economic Union and an amendment to the Civil Aviation Regulations. The Assembly will provide an opportunity for members of the OECS to forge ahead and confront, in a political manner, issues and matters affecting the Union. In preparation for Tuesday's sitting of the Assembly, a seminar was held on Monday. During Monday's seminar, the members of Parliament and Associates reviewed the revised Treaty of Bastyr and the significance of the OECS Assembly as an organ of the organization. The group also considered the legislative competence of the OECS Assembly as enshrined in the treaty. The OECS and the Caribbean community, CARICOM, and how both bodies interface also formed part of Monday's agenda. The Assembly and seminar is being held at the House of Parliament in St. John's, Antigua. In other news, secondary school literature teachers across the island are being exposed to the work of great Caribbean poets for a Caribbean poetry workshop. The two-day workshop, which commenced on Monday at the Public Service Training Center in Roseau, is organized by the Ministry of Education in collaboration with the University of the West Indies Cavill Campus. The series of workshops, which was launched in St. Vincent and the Grenadines last year, is designed to give teachers a better appreciation for the work of Caribbean poets and to expand expose them to new skills in teaching the subject. Coordinator of the Caribbean Poetry Workshop, Dr. Sandra Robinson, says based on the substandard performance of Caribbean students in the subject, there is a need to enhance the knowledge of secondary school English teachers, hence the need for such workshops. An important aim of these workshop activities is to enhance the knowledge and teaching of Caribbean poetry among secondary teachers and to sorry, and to promote achievement through the learning and teaching of Caribbean poetry in schools in the Caribbean in a way which one acknowledges the importance of poetry in language development and in encouraging higher order thinking and critical skills. Two, recognizes the need for continuing the upgrading of our teachers of English in areas where there is insufficient support. And three, recognizes that improvements can be made as teachers examine their own experiences of poetry, analyze their responses to it, and engage with new approaches and stances to poetry. And so we hope that you teachers will benefit not only from your engagement with the pedagogical activities in the workshop, but also from your observation of the facilitators in their own practice and from your interaction with each other. Dominica's Chief Education Officer Stevenson Hyacinth says this training ties in with efforts by the Ministry to ensure that teachers who teach English literature are adequately trained. We recognize that there is a dearth of trained literature teachers at our schools 
And we have been working with our schools to increase this capacity. Undoubtedly, this workshop will further expose our teachers to the knowledge, skills, and approaches to the teaching of literature, thus enabling our students to develop a greater appreciation for the subject. The Senior Education Officer in the Curriculum Measurement and Evaluation Unit, Nicholas Goldberg, endorsed the workshop. It is my hope that this workshop will open the eyes of our teachers to the power of the poem and motivate them to discover the Caribbean poets and better appreciate their work. For to be a teacher of literature, you must read literature. In outlining the many benefits of studying literature, the Chief Education Officer encouraged the teachers participating in the Caribbean Poetry Workshop to take advantage of the new skills which they will be exposed to and be prepared to use the knowledge gained on their return to the classroom. It is my hope that all of your teachers will embrace this opportunity and make the best use of this workshop. That you will go back to your schools and to your classroom with a burning desire and passion to try some, if not all, of the new strategies and techniques that you will glean from this workshop. In 2012, 106 students wrote literature exams at CXC level, with 78 of those being successful. Officials say this figure represents less than 10% of the entire fifth form cohort. The Ministry of Education, as part of its strategic plan, has been working on new strategies to increase the number of students writing the English B or literature exams at CXC level. As the Ministry, we emphasize the importance of an effective literature program at all our schools because we strongly believe that literature provides students with the opportunity to be creative, to think critically, to think outside the box, to appreciate reading, to be a character in a play or a story they have read or a poem they have recited, to analyze and judge it from the perspective, to imagine the ending, to share the sentiments of certain characters, to feel the pains and to celebrate the successes and accomplishments. Education Minister Honorable Peter Seja challenged the teachers to think of creative and enjoyable ways to make learning literature and poetry exciting. The traditional views of literacy once meant basic competence in reading and writing. Today, we know that this is all about usage and comprehension skills in speaking, listening, and viewing. And of course, in a technologically advanced global environment, it now means being able to communicate through a variety of media, including visual arts, drama, multimedia performances. And as a teacher, you must begin to consider how your teaching of poetry fits into this context and satisfies the new modern requirements of literacy development. The Caribbean Poetry Workshop is being facilitated by professors from the Department of Language, Linguistics and Literature at UEKville campus. A press conference by the Fisheries Division convened on Monday to discuss the seagrasses of Dominica, but more in particular to bring awareness to an invasive species originating from the Indian Ocean. This species was first sighted in 2006, and more recently, officials have seen a massive spread of that species. Andrew McGlaw, senior fisheries officer, spoke briefly about the species. These seagrass, especially the ones that we will talk about today, the halophilia species, okay, um, was observed in very small pockets of the northern coast of, of Dominica. And uh, today, because of the characteristics of that species, it has become a species that is of extreme concern to us. We believe that it got here through ballast water and um, has literally taken over the west coast of the island to, to date. McGlaw explains the importance of seagrass beds. Our seagrass beds are, in my view, they are much more important than the coral beds. 
because they take up a much larger expanse of marine space than the little fragments of corals that we have. The second thing about it is that they, they are very instrumental in terms of maintaining the biological diversity that we have, we are, we have been able to experience in Dominica for a number of years, okay? as far as fish species are concerned, and particularly the commercial species of fish that reach onto the dinner table right, and have become such a, uh, an important component of our, our diet. It's also very important for turtles as well, and even the connection between Dominica in terms of turtles from a, 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 you call it, a recreational um, use of the resource to turtle being utilized as a food source. Okay, um, we begin to see the importance of how the seagrass plays a particular role. McGlaw says over the past years, the Institute for Tropical Marine Ecology has been studying Dominica's marine ecology, including the characteristics and location of these species and how they could potentially affect Dominica's marine life. Dr. Steiner from the Institute for Tropical Marine Ecology confirmed that the Halophilia stipulacy species is indeed an aggressive one. In Prince Rupert's Bay, the species has become the dominant seagrass species by displacing other native species. This particular seagrass species that we first uh, documented in 2007 and actually experimentally looked at how quickly it spreads several centimeters per day. Um, it's a very aggressive species um, and I obviously noticed that it had been spreading throughout the west coast and with uh, the conversations I had with uh, Mr. McGlure and other people at the fisheries division um, I decided to return with the help of uh, one of my former colleagues or current colleague also at UCLA to see if we can um, get a grasp on assessing the dimensions of the seagrass and uh, what the implications are. For the past three weeks, Dr. Steiner and his associate have been studying the invasive seagrass. He explained exactly what seagrasses are. It's not sea moss or algae, okay? So the local name is Zeb, Zeb la me. That is what we're talking about. Those are the seagrasses we're talking about. We're not talking about things you collect on rocks in Kalabishi or off Mahu and you give it to the sea moss man and he will make sea moss. That is not what we're talking about. We're talking about flowering plants, just like you have plants on land, or if you imagine grass on land or, or mulch or lemongrass with, with flowers and with seeds, that's what we're talking about, this type of organism. But this particular species happens to grow um, within the marine environment, and that's what seagrasses are. Dr. Steiner's presentation gave an account of the invasive seagrass that is now present in Dominica. On this opening picture, you can see here um, this whole area. This is basically a carpet of the new seagrass species that was not there before. So this is how big the changes are. Here we are at about 15 meters, where in many areas you have 15 meters depth sandy environments or you had the local seagrass species but very sparse you would ha have a strand here and there and in those areas the new or the invasive seagrass species does very well um, and has expanded very quickly his presentation demonstrated just how much the invasive species has taken over two-thirds of this native area has now been replaced by another species and on top of that it has moved into sandy areas and into deeper waters and we have seen it up to 95 feet, so close to 30 meters. I am not sure if that is the limit. It might, it might go on. So we have more than doubled our biomass, but over 85% is taken by the biomass, by, by this invasive species. And other species are, were basically completely displaced. <laughs> Joining us now is Chief Fisheries Officer Andrew McGlaw to talk to us more on the sea grasses. Good evening, Mr. McGlaw. How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay, for so having me. you're welcome. So basically, what I want to know is how important are sea grasses to Dominica's marine life? Um, sea grasses actually provide a number of different um, important functions within the marine environment. Uh, they will provide nesting grounds for um, spawning aggregation of fish. Mm -hmm. They will also provide, within that same area, they will provide um, habitat for the juveniles of, okay. of, of fish and crustaceans, crabs, etc. Uh, they will provide also of food for many species mm -hmm. of fish, turtles, 
um, conk, what we call labi, okay? Yeah. And um, very importantly, which is one of the areas that people don't pay much attention to, it tends to be associated more with corals, but okay. seagrass also provides a lot of shoreline protection from erosion by stabilizing the seafloor in okay. terms of the routing system. So when you put all of those together in terms of a composite um, arrangement, you begin to understand how dynamic right. the role and function of, of the seagrass beds are. They're, they're, they're very, very important. important. They are very, very okay. important. So in Dr. Steiner's um, presentation, we saw that Dominica has five different kinds of seagrasses. Yeah. And one of them, more specifically, is, has invaded yeah. the, the, the other seagrasses. Um, mm -hmm. What does its presence mean? to Dominica's okay. marine life and the other seagrasses? Yeah, first, first of all, let me, let me say that um, we, we recognized um, that Stipulacea, which is the now considered invasive species, was observed for the first time in our waters in 2006. Okay. And um, its prevalence were mainly in the deeper reaches of the seafloor that seagrasses would normally habit it. Um, in very small patches towards the northern end of the island. Uh, in 2008, a, a survey was done by ITME, and um, by that time, it had become a little bit more prevalent in terms mm -hmm. of its, its presence. So if we, if we look at this chart that, we had, that had laid out the distribution of seagrasses, the, the five species that we could find at that, at that point in time, they were at that time making up about 10% of the coverage. Okay. Okay, whereas the Philonoma species, which is the dominant species at the time, was probably about 85 to 90 percent coverage of our seagrass, um, total seagrass bed arrangements. The recent survey that we did in 2013 showed a complete opposite. So now Philonoma is now taking up about 10 percent of the coverage of, of, of aerial space, and uh, the Halophilia stipulacea, which is the invasive species, mm -hmm. is now about 90% in terms of coverage. Yeah. So it has really exploded and taken over many of the, the, the um, habitats associated with the growth of seagrass. Okay, now, is this invasive seagrass a good thing or a bad thing? Well, we are at the stage where we're trying to assess um, whether or what, did the, what are the impacts, negative or positive, that this, this particular species is going to present to Dominica and the ecology of the marine environment as we know it. Um, what we have seen so far is, is very alarming for us mm -hmm. uh, in, in that this, this grass is spreading at an alarming rate. It is habitating areas that have never been colonized by seagrasses or the traditional yeah. seagrasses as we know. Okay. So generally we would have associated our seagrasses to about 18 to 20 meters of water depth. That is because light penetration to those depths were limited to these Aries. species that we have okay. currently know to exist. With this species, we are seeing it up to 30 meters in depth. And um, it, is, it is colonizing the entire reaches from about two meters of depth of water all the way down to 30 meters depth of water. Wow. That is important because um, what we have observed in, in terms of that, it is actually creating a displacement factor to many of the species of organisms that we know traditionally to be associated with seagrass mm -hmm. beds. So you do not find them there. So if, for example, you take a quadrat of a meter by a meter and you go in there to try to assess the ecological distribution of species within that, you will, it will take you quite a bit of time to, to go through um, filioma, filioma mm -hmm. seagrass, right. to identify all the different species in terms of the population, the varieties, and so on. And it will take you a few seconds to go through the same area with this um, stipular species and find that you're finding absolutely nothing within there, very little in terms of, of biological life associated with okay. that. that so in a nutshell, what is it that you want the Dominican public to know? Well, well two things. Um, we're concerned because we, we believe that that species arrived through the transportation from where it's originally associated with the um, Red Sea got to Dominica, in our view, through ballast water. That's the most prevalent mechanism that we think that it could get here by. Um, ballast water, as we know, is um, water that ships will take on from one region mm -hmm. in order to stabilize them towards the journey. And when they get to the ports, they need to offload that water in order to come into ports. 
And so by offloading those waters, they are carrying all of these species associated with different regions to other regions. So that's one way we think it got, yeah. got to Dominica. Um, so it's of concern to us because we believe it, it has such a striking force in terms of changing the ecological fabric of okay. the reefs that we associate to it. And what does that mean? It means it has implication for our fisheries, it has an implication for our traditional um, food resources and so forth. It has implications for the ecological status of the, the reef itself. And more so during the hurricane seasons, it has implications for coastal erosion because it is not a well-rooted species, a well-rooted species as the traditional ones. So okay. stabilization of the seafloor is not as profound in this species as you would find in the other species. Mm -hmm. So these are the, some of the implications that we think that are going to help okay. us. Right. Thank you, Ms. McGuire. You're welcome. <laughs> In more news, Elizabeth Agafin Gossi of the northern town of Portsmouth celebrated a 100th birthday on Saturday. Family and friends gathered at the Portsmouth Seventh Day Adventist Church for a special service held in her honor. Today we are we are extremely blessed. Amen. Amen. We are extremely blessed to be celebrants of this moment because it is really a bliss to be in this place to recognize and celebrate with one who has seen so many sunrises and sunsets. I wish we could have some more Christians like Sister Gussie in the land. After I would have left here 16 years ago, I can still come back and find her strong in the Lord. I wish we can have some more Christians like these in the land. There were several special moments for the centenarian during Saturday's service, including a performance from Jenna Roberts. I look to you, I look to you, and when melodies are gone, in you I am a strong. Garcia, a mother of 12, five of whom are alive, was described by Pernell Roberts as a hard-working woman. Her whole life was described as one of hard work and a fight for survival. For this reason, she commented, and I quote, Minister for Social Services, Community Development and Gender Affairs, Honorable Gloria Schillingford, attended last weekend's celebration. We love our elderly, and that is why we continue to help in whatever way we can. And through the Ministry of Social Services and Community Development Gender Affairs, soon she will be getting a small amount of $500, but nonetheless, to help at least take care of her until she goes. She will also receive her LPG gas, and in any way we can to help to support the family, we will do that. Meantime, Acting Prime Minister Honorable Reginald Austrie had words of commendation for her family. I want to thank the family for having seen this lady for 100. Because the pastor said it this morning, that one of the things we do is we diss our elderly at a very early age. We cannot wait to send them to Grange. We cannot wait to send them to the poor house. We cannot wait to send them to the infirmary. And that is not right. And all around the country we go, we notice that same trend. And that is why the government had to introduce what we call the Yes We Care program. For Elizabeth Garcia, Saturday's service was an opportunity to sing along to some of her favorite gospel songs. Uh, yeah. During the reception following Saturday's service, Garcia got the opportunity to have some of her birthday cake and share some champagne with members of her family. And that's the English segment of the news. Mark Ferson St. Louis joins us next with the Creole Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non moins, c'est Mark Ferson St. Louis. Premièrement, ministre d'éducation en collaboration et puis UA. Catching on workshop où la teacher l'école secondaire, State College en premier d'autres, 
Quand tu as fait un entraînement pour te poésie, ça c'est ça fait poème en l'école. Workshop de jours ça là ouvert en public service training center en Wozo Bomatela. Ministère d'éducation honorable Peter Saint Jean a dû se cérémonier pour ouvrir workshop là. Jean de là nous ni on le officier Hord Yui ça c'est University à um, West Indies et aussi Hord University à en Dominique avec ministre éducation qui a facilité on, ça nous a créé un workshop pour teachers en l'école secondaire qui a teach posi ça nous a créé poetry à uh, qu'est-ce que nous a oué qui nous besoin augmenter um, ça nous a éduqué maman et nous en grande école là yo ça wellman délivrer posi poetry Là, il a servi, ça nous a créé l'imagination, il a servi, il a catché les codes bagailles et il a écrit. Et nous avons vu que ces bitins ça, il a aidé ces jeunes gens ça, il en anglais, puisque Magoué nous a fait bien en anglais, en, en l'examen CXC. Nous n'y avons l'eau pour gré pour nous faire en ces lignes ça yo et nous quand quoi qui workshop ça là que un des jeunes monde pour développer yo puisque ces teachers là yo ces teachers qui trouvé uh, information qui que un des yo pour augmenter manière yo qu'a délivrer ces licences ça yo par la nouvelle compagnie d'Owasco organiser activité pour journée de l'eau mondiale qui passait vendredi semaine passée il y a un petit bagage là qui était organisé c'était compétition poste et puis SM où la l'école ou, ou la projet de l'eau West Coast qui a passé, participé. Ces étudiants-là mettent attention à ce manier projet de la qui a en bénéfice du monde. Les étudiants qui sélectent leur compétition de la tapé cadeau à Yojandéa. M. Edward Regis, c'est officier de relations publiques pour la compagnie de West Coast. Nous avons une cérémonie pour nous à um, un cadeau ba de trois jeunes monde. Um, qui participait à de, des compétitions nous tenir ici à Dawasco. Comme ça, vendredi passé, nous um, venions ensemble avec l'Est de la Terre pour nous observer, ça nous crier une um, journée pour nous mettre attention à ce globe. Ça, c'est World Water Day. Et bien, ça, c'est une grande journée qui tourne la Terre, il y a observé, et bien, il y a des différentes activités um, pour nous mettre attention à ce important globe. Avec um, ça, nous tenons différentes activités, mais une de ces activités à nous tenir, c'était en compétition en parmi um, les um, enfants qui allaient à l'école primary. Avec nous, mettez attention à ce um, grand projet à nous qui est West Coast Water Supply Project. Parce que le thème là, nous, nous, nous tenons pour, pour, pour journée, c'était Water Corporation, comment nous avons coopéré pour mener le globe projet ça même c'est un grand projet qui a trouvé l'argent de l'European Union avec aussi le gouvernement dominique qui a venu ensemble qui a coopéré pour faire projet ça comme ça nous nous um, garder projet ça qui était um, bien bon pour nous ça mettre attention en ligne avec ça nous ouais qui c'est des gars qui match bon petit composition avec ces jeunes enfants aussi yo 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 fait Belty um, drawing, ban, Belty poster. Avec, il y a 12 qui, qui voyaient différents habitants, mais nous souhaitons 6. 6 ça qui gagnent, ils ont trouvé cadeau au bon matin. Par la nouvelle, des étudiants ont cassé Bruce qui attendait l'école secondaire par bon compliment scholarship Dr. Augustus Balmont. Joyon Edwards et puis Joyel Challenger. Vous avez vu le scholarship où vous avez attendu l'école secondaire de Casse Bruce pour 5 années. C'est tout bien ça là, vous avez vu ce scholarship salam, si nos conditions vous avez expérimenté. Tous les années, Dr. Valmont a fait donation à l'étude de la communauté Casse Bruce où il est sorti. Si l'on parle de Dr. Valmont, ça c'est une manière pour bavouer les choses pour aider la communauté. Là. Et vous avez fait par wall qui est assisté d'autres manières pour la communauté. Finalement, un japonais volontaire qui travaille et puis ministre du sport, Yuya Sumida, fait présentation d'un report pour le ministre du sport. Sumida a présenté le report de la Café Powell qui était bien plaisir pour travailler ici. Association volleyball Dominique Tapé Twinman, Hord Sumida, et puis chef association Albert Leblanc, qui a pour ça.
Je suis là pour dire merci à Yuya Semoda, ici en coach volleyball, qui était quand de nous à l'association volleyball. Ah oui, parce qu'il était ici pour des années, et il était quand assisté nous avec la uh, national sélection femmes et avec nom. Quand il était avec nous, nous participions dans des compétitions, il y en a dans um, BVI avec un autre dans Um, antique avec nous fait bien uh, nous gagnons en BVI nous venons premier et nous venons troisième en, en antique avec uh, Moussé um, Yuya il fait un bon pas à l'équipe um, là il y a des séjours uh, très bien um, pour uh, et fait nous avancer en compétition là Merci madame, ça c'est tout pour nos nouvelles créoles pour à présent non moins c'est Mac Fosson saint au revoir Well, thank you, Mark Fusson. Coming up next, your tip of the day. In today's tip, we'll share with you how to maintain beautiful skin. Collagen aids in the production of skin, blood vessels, ligaments, scar tissue, and muscles. Common skin disorders and conditions can decrease your collagen levels. To regrow and promote collagen growth, adjust your diet to include foods rich in vitamins and minerals. Eating oranges, cashews, and fish can aid the process. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or you could visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Pearl Fontaine. And I'm Mervyn Matthew. Thank you so much for watching.